All right. Hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Doyle Bueller and I'm with my co-host Keith Keller, uh, who will say a few words coming up very, very soon. We also have a special guest, Sarjeet Johal, who will be joining in our discussion as well. So welcome digital challengers and live stream. Welcome to live streaming Dakota, where we show you the strategies, tools, and the platforms that your business needs to define your brand value, create remarkable digital experiences worth remembering and deliver online anytime and any place as well. Today, we're talking about what's really important here, our live streaming ABC, audience building content. And I got to thank Keith for coming up with that fantastic idea. So today in part four of our limited series shows, we're talking about uh, Periscope and live streaming security via StreamYard. And we're uh, so we're broadcasting on StreamYard. Let's dig in. Keith, welcome. Hey, look, you know, we are on part four. I'm really excited about this. and I'm going to spend a minute or two just decoding what's happened so far. We're on part four. This show was going to be about Restream. And we're going to talk a little bit about Restream, yeah. but mainly the things we can't do. We can't have guests. And without guests, I can't personally see the point of Restreaming, although I have got some friends that do it, Restream.io. And there are some really cool features we'll talk about later. But what we've decided to do is we've decided to use StreamYard.com, which in my opinion, in part four and beyond is unbeatable in the live streaming place last week was zoom it was hard it was really painful as a live streaming platform we did it it was fine but it was really hard to do some of the basic things so today we're using Streamyard. we're sending the file to facebook and periscope simultaneously and Periscope automatically syncs to Twitter. So right there, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and Periscope simultaneously using a site called StreamYard.com. And then what we've decided to do is send the replay to YouTube, and you can get the replays at uh, LivestreamingDecoded.com. I'm setting up that. Uh, I have to manually do that, but I'm prepared to do that because it's, uh, it's a better use case for our listeners. And I, I think that the whole idea of uh, live streaming decoded is we are trying things as we go. You know, and we, we don't know everything yet, yet. And we're trying things and some, some things work and some things don't. Yeah. Doyle's going to talk a little bit about what Restream really means and how we, there are some cool features. Uh, we're going to talk about Periscope. We're also going to talk about the live streaming security thing because that's really powerful today. Uh, this week, lots of stuff is going down and we need you need to know what's the good, the bad and the ugly. Zoom is fine, but we're also going to try WebEx eventually. We just found out today that we're going to do LinkedIn Live next week. Now, I'm not throwing all these terms at you to confuse you. I'm just showing you that we are the crash test dummies. We are in there <laughs> trying things. The dummy part. We, I'm, I'm a dummy. The dummy part. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I like yeah. that positioning. I like the idea that oh, sure. we've tried things. And so first things first, we're using Periscope because we decided not to use Restream. What happened with Restream and why didn't we use it? um it was a little bit well the main thing was that it didn't have gas and yeah. just before we jump into that i want to say that you did say something keith that was really important is that we don't know everything so that's why we've been having guests to come and talk and today yeah. we've got uh sarjeet johal who's uh where are you joining us from today so hey i'm uh, in san san francisco area in fremont oh, to, be, to be precise uh, Fremantle. Uh, huh Fre is there a free mantle fremont uh, Fremont, Fremont okay. Yeah. okay. Fremont next to San Jose, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. there's a Fremantle over here in my part of the world. Oh, is yeah, right. cool. So thanks for joining us, Sarjeet. Yeah. Yeah. Tell I'm us happy. a little bit about yourself. I'm happy to be here. Actually, I'm a practitioner of technology for the last 25 years. Uh, came to Silicon Valley in 94 and uh, I am an economics major, but um, started coding when I was doing my PhD in economics, which I left in between. So never look back when I moved to US and I coded a lot of systems that people saw after Commerce One, companies like that. And then I joined Oracle after that, then EMC, then VMware, then Rackspace, um, and then Oracle again. And now I'm independent consultant for the last about four yeah. years or so. So worked with many startups and so forth. So I kind of live and breathe technology in this world. You know? <laughs> and what, did, what did you call it at the beginning, Sarjeet? You said mm -hmm. it was a technology. 
Um, no, I'm a technologist. Yeah, I'm a technologist. I'm pra I practice that. I mean, that's what I said in the beginning. A practicing technologist. That was it. I think. Yeah, yeah actually, right? I'm an yeah, independent yeah. consultant. If you, if you want to get my title, and I work yeah. with um, C level execs to do their go to market strategy and technology consumption. I focus on cloud mostly for twelve last yeah. twelve years. Uh, I'm, I've been in the, with, working with the cloud providers, uh, service yeah. providers, and before that, technology providers. So. Yeah, I'm mainly a software guy, not a hardware guy. Or, yeah. Okay, okay, that's good. <laughs> and and so, what here. about live streaming? Like, like, how do you use it for business or for fun or whatever the case may be? Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's a mix right now. So, I use it for my personal brand. I did not use live streaming for business per se, but in a way, we did. We used to do WebEx, uh, sort of a mass education for system integrators from Oracle, from PeopleSoft days. We will you know, train a bunch of people, like hundreds of people uh, with the uh, system integrators, right? They will watch us, how we do stuff, demos and all that. So it was it used to be partially recorded. It's a recorded, like, how do you do stuff? Like, how do you set up a new supplier in the supply chain manager, for example, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, or later, how, how do you set up cloud and all that stuff? But then after that, we'll take it, um, it to Q and A. That part was live, so it was like a hybrid approach. So the tools were not mature. Um, there was only few players, um, like only Cisco mainly was doing it. So yeah, and, and few others. But now it's totally different. So I use it uh, now. As of late, I started using Restream.io. Actually, I'm not well versed with other sort of um, vendors. Uh, I do used zoom a lot uh microsoft meetings uh, uh the, the uh, live meeting is that called microsoft What's teams that? yeah yeah teams yes teams yeah. yeah you can tell like i'm not using that much so microsoft <laughs> yeah. teams uh i tried mm -hmm. that i didn't like it so uh, of course like we used um cisco's webex a lot in the past and uh, uh net meeting and stuff like that so yeah it it has been fun um the, the the what I I was what I started uh, why I started using um, Restream.io was like it lets you stream to multiple platforms at, at the same time, so you have just one camera, one mic, and then you just go out to, to the world. It doesn't let you get uh, invite actually guests, right? But yeah. it is on their roadmap. I see on their website and they will allow. Yeah. That's yeah, coming. Apply for yeah. it. Um, I applied for it as soon as I got it. So, yeah. or as soon as I rather set up the account, um, which is good. But I'm actually surprised that they didn't have that before. And I, I know everybody can't have everything to start with, but um, your to volume me, is a little low. Uh, to your volume is a little low. It? If you can bump it up a little bit. Mm. Okay. Um, how's is that? Is that a little bit better? Yeah, a little bit better. I might, mine might be low and I just pumped it up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, to, to me, live streaming really is more about, you know, the communication that you're having, the connections that you're creating um, yeah. as well. And to not have that as sort of a baseline tool, like it kind of, I don't know, to me, it kind of defeats the purpose type thing. It is okay from sort of the training perspective, the webinar perspective, like, yeah, get my information out there and you know away we go kind of thing but from the um community side of things like that's i think what's really important today well look let me pick up on that because one of the one of the really powerful ideas of why i came up with live streaming abc audience building content is that we've been doing a lot of twitter polls and our audience said that the two things that are most important to them and i think I've sent you a copy of the poll. I'm not sure if you've got it, but we can we can talk about it organically. Is that what they want to create content, but they also want to build a community. And yeah. I believe, as Doyle said, you know, we don't know everything. And the real power, I think, of live streaming is when you collaborate live to say, you know what, I don't know the answer to this. And isn't it great that we can get someone from Perth, Fremantle, not technically Fremantle, but Fremantle. We can get someone from Fremont in San yeah. Francisco, and we can get a guy from Melbourne, Australia, together yeah. on the screen talking about these tech challenges, cybersecurity, all these different things. I, I don't know everything. 
and I, I, I can't possibly learn everything on my own. So the idea of not being able to have guests is a is a weakness I can't get past for now. Not but when true. Restream, when Restream adds guests, it will, I will say, be unbeatable because it has, and I want to hear your thoughts on this, Doyle, it has significant add-ons, significant goodies, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. There are some little features that are, are pretty good. Um, for example, being able to broadcast to um, multiple channels, more than two, like StreamYard in, the, in their initial level of paid accounts, they only allow you to stream to two channels. Um, and then it jumps up at like double the price for three or more. So yeah, uh, restream. Yeah, it has them all set up away you go. Um, Facebook, uh, you can multi multi stream as well to your personal profile, multiple groups, you know, not just one Facebook page or group at a time as well. Uh, Periscope and that sort of thing. So uh, there's there's a lot of things that you can actually do. It also has the ability to, to pre record or preset rather a um, Sorry, I was just trying to go. Live. You can record the video and put it there and I just schedule it up front, actually. That's what yeah, you mean. A, yeah, a little, a little scheduling, a little scheduling tool ahead of time. I saw that. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, cool. Exactly. I think at high level, I think we have to take a look at the live streaming as two different things. One is outlets where the eyeballs are, right? Yeah. That's Twitter, right? Through Periscope, kind of, right? And then that's uh, LinkedIn. And that's Facebook, mainly those three platforms, right? Google has its own thing, but it's only, there's no outlet other than actually Google has one, which is uh, YouTube, right? So I think that we should treat that as outlets and then we should treat the platforms as a separate thing, right? And restream.io is a platform which will let you go to these outlets. These yeah. outlets, actually, these outlets, by the way, they let you go straight to them with live stream with the camera and mic, but only it, that's only for one thing at a time, right? Yeah. So I think we have to take a look at those, those like, separately. And it gets pretty complicated pretty soon once you start producing uh, like more professional looking um, um, live streams, right? Where there's a ticker at the bottom and there's news on the right and call to action link and stuff like that i want to pick up yeah. on this because a friend of mine said oh look i can't keep up with all these different sites and i said look don't worry about the tech worry about the audience so for instance and i did the stats today um periscope has 2 million 1.9 million daily users eager to get mm. content 2 million but most importantly twitter it owns periscope so it automatically syncs your periscope feed to your twitter feed and Twitter has 166 million daily users. There's yeah. 166 million people there, not all wanting your content, but there's a lot of them that would. And so if you know that Twitter and Periscope is a powerful way to share your content, 168 million daily users, and you know, they're under 50, they're, they earn over 80,000. There's, you know, there's a predominantly male audience. Once you understand the demographics, link, and next week we're doing LinkedIn Live because that's a different demographic, suddenly you don't have to worry so much about the tech initially. And then all these other sites like Restream, they allow you to look better because, I mean, we've all done this, we've all seen this, and Carol, my wife, who's at working from home is it's got all these stories of people getting up from the table and they've got no pants on yeah. <laughs> and they're just they're just doing these live streams with a suit and tie and underpants and i'm thinking well why would you do that and she says oh, i was hot you know i didn't want to wear pants yeah okay and you know there's other people who said look i'm busting to go to the toilet i'll just put myself on mute and they don't put themselves on mute and suddenly yeah. they they flush the toilet in the middle of a meeting so what we're doing here with this tech is we're trying to make it, each other look professional. And I love what you're doing, Subjeet. I just love that black background. It just looks so cool. <laughs> and that's a technique. That's a bit of tech. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rather than having, you know, clothes in the background on the hanger or, you know, the, the vacuum cleaner in the corner or kids walking past because we're living life well, working from we, home. Can we dissect that, Sarjeet? How do you actually do that? Is that a virtual cam that you're using or is it a studio or office, whatever? 
Oh, this is my office. Actually, uh, this is, uh, if you move it around a little bit, uh, I don't know if you can see my guitar, all that stuff. That wall is up there. It's white. It's just the, the I went to this uh, clothing store to get this uh, little thick mesh of kind of cloth like thing. Um, it's like a vinyl kind of thing. So I put it back okay. there and it gives me so consistent it's back. It's just a background. Yeah, yeah. It's not, there's yeah, no green screen. Actually, I have a green screen, which, which I hardly ever use. Yeah, yeah. They, they yeah. Sometimes they're not worth the hassle, quite honestly. No, it's not, actually. <laughs> yeah, your hair is moving, and it's, like, it's just when you, when you move, like, you, like, was, sometimes you, part of your ear is floating around. <laughs> yeah, there was one lady I was watching on a live stream the other day, and she had, like, beautiful, you know, puffy hair, and, mm -hmm. and she had, like, a, a virtual background, and it's like, how on earth is it kind of going through all the the hairs because you know you have the individual hairs out here yeah. and it was like yeah. normally you'd see like a lot of digitization here on the outside or green or blue or whatever but it was like perfect i don't know if i find and the, look, the other thing too is that i've never seen this done before subject so your live streams always look different you know, we know that's you because no one else does that really that's, what is it yeah huh. well that, have that's you ever seen point. it done to him? With no, the... I haven't. Actually, it is very unique, Sarjeet. Yeah, I, and and you know what? That's perhaps what we need to do is how do we identify our space in something like live stream? That would yeah. be sort of an interesting question to partake. Because yeah, I can know that that's Sarjeet because I, well, I we were on a live last week where you come came and join us. Yeah, but that was it's a very distinct look and it, it really oh, kind really? Of stands yeah. out. Going yeah, okay, that that's that's pretty cool. And that's all comes down to branding, doesn't it? Branding. We we yeah. want we yeah, want our, you know when you see that you know ah oh, that subject that's his live stream. We we will yeah. develop a bit of a flavor over time. At the moment, our flavor is that every week is different. That's our flavor because yeah. we're trying things. But when when we get our mojo and we decide on a uh, a format and a set of graphics and a maybe some theme music and a font and a style, our show will take on a format. But um, I think it's very, very important. You've got the tech, you've got the content, but you also got the audience, ABC, audience building content. Yeah, yeah. I think we, we talked about like how many active users, D, DAUs, right, are on Twitter versus LinkedIn versus Facebook. I think those numbers are like big numbers are meaningless in many ways because okay. I think we need to know who do we cater to and where those people are. Right. Yeah. In B two B, I'm in a B two B tech, right? So I know LinkedIn is where most of the people sort of hang around, and then Twitter is also a, a big part of that, like where the real time dialogue happens. We have so many discussions around cloud, edge, and and cloud security, and system security, and data centers, and all kind of stuff. Like you can get so much um, out there, and then there's so many thought leaders and daily active on that. So I think that. I would rather have 100 um, active listeners than like 10,000 people listening I, to me. I agree with you. Yeah, who don't want to, they're not interested in it or, or they I think are not The reason why that's important, subject is that Restream can be a little bit of a, I, I won't say the word trap, but it can be a very enticing to think that you could send your file to 30 sites. But I, I, look, I'm not sure hmm. anyone on Twitch would be interested in this. You know, yeah, they might. Some, some but people probably not, yeah. but people on Periscope or Facebook or LinkedIn, yeah. who are actively online and engaged, they would be much more likely to get our stuff, and that's where I hang out, so I can chat to them after the show. Yeah, the one more, one most important thing I think we talked last time, but I briefly showed up on in the on this show was that the interactivity interactivity has to be there in in live. If it's there's no interactivity, then it's not live according to me. It's just like I can record the video and put it out there. If I'm not interacting with like somebody joins us and say like, hey Joe, hey Cindy, hey, um, yeah. you know, call people by name, but we can't call everybody, of course, but like randomly, you know, pick pick people and say hello, um, and and take their questions in real time. And then Erica is here, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hey Erica, Erica, so welcome Erica, <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> So Erica's, where is Erica? There she is. She's in Facebook. This is exactly yeah. what we're talking about, no, no, isn't well, it? Well, exactly. it says she's coming from Periscope. Oh, there is. Per she can. Are she you can in Facebook say or Periscope? Periscope. 
I was going to ask the question with StreamYard because you can have up to five if you pay the 50 bucks a month. It sounds now like you can actually bring in guests from Periscope. Yes, on Twitter. Don't you think that's cool? That is awesome. See, that what, is awesome. What, I miss that, Keith. What I'm saying is I just assumed that you could only bring in guests' comments from Facebook, but now it right. seems yes. that you can bring yeah, in yeah. – because yeah, I know you right. can't do that with LinkedIn. You can't. They don't have the API. What do they call it? The API. API. They yeah, don't. Yeah. They don't allow you to bring in the comments from LinkedIn or, or even YouTube. I think. But now we know we've got active listeners. Erica can ask a question and we can respond. That's yep. exactly what we want, isn't it? So ask a question, Erica, and, and we'll respond and then, to it. But then bringing people into it as well, right, and having that conversation. Right. I mean, this makes it so much funner with, you know, Keith and Sarjeet to be able to talk about this stuff than just kind of doing it myself like a, you know, a boring old webinar kind of thing. Yeah. It's the yeah. webinar process, isn't it? Just the sort of a flat sort of me yeah. talking to you. Yeah. One thing I want to mention is like you guys uh, said that there are some platforms which don't allow you to invite the guests. Right. And that's a big shortcoming. But you can bypass that if you use, um, I always miss these names like uh, OBS Studio. Yeah. OBS is a yeah. standard, like it's like the fact, the fact of standard in uh, doing the live streaming. People who are doing it for a while, like gamers and all that, they do that. Yeah. So you can have multiple cameras and you can have uh, some things coming from your screen and something is like playing on YouTube and you can merge those together into small windows and you have five things at the same time and stuff like that. So I think. Yeah. I think we should not rule out the Restream.io or any platform which doesn't Can allow you, you to do it? Isn't, it hard? isn't it hard? Is it hard, Doyle? You, you'd know. I, I couldn't get it to work. Yeah, look, it, it is fairly complicated. And, and I mean, if you're a tech guy, it's okay. But yeah, at the, the, you know, the bottom line is, is that this is for businesses. So we want to make sure that they're able to Restream properly without or stream period without sort of that complexity of it as well. And part of our rating system is, you know, on a scale of one to five, how easy is this to set up type thing? Yeah. Um, so we want to keep it easy for business as well. If you're doing a regular show and you're producing and getting all that sort of as part of that, then yes, absolutely. You need that, um, that level of technology to be able to carry it forward. But for the average business, how do they kind of quickly set up? How do they get themselves out there to be anywhere, anytime across the internet? Well, let and me give a, a quick yeah. uh, shout out to my friend, Marae. I, can, I forget how to say her name. She's just asking the question, what, 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 what's the business yeah, Marae proposition? Ryan yeah, Marae the, Ryan. From Media Marketing Institute. What's yeah, the yeah, business yeah. proposition of, um, of live streaming? Why would you do it? Why would you go on live stream? How's that going to generate income or business? What, what do you think? Um, that, that's a question for me. Yeah, what, but, yeah, what yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I think I think it's brand building, not sales channel, if you will. So you can marketers, smart marketers will turn into more sales funnel later, maybe six months down the line or one year, where you click on something and they save you in database and they call you back, da 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 da, da right? But I think it's mainly um, brand building. It's your, it's your putting your authentic message yeah. out there. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's connecting to people. It's actually community building. It's great for educating masses. I usually say that to out compete the your competitors, you have to out educate the market. You know that's how wow. it works. Say that, that again. Right? Say that again. To out compete your competitors, you have to out educate the market. So you have to more, give more education than your competitor, and that's why Amazon AWS is AWS in cloud. And that's why Microsoft was Microsoft in the 90s with the VB, VB language and stuff like that. So you have to have whatever communities you are serving. It can be developer community, operations. It can be whatever, right? It can be a restaurant, like a business. A restaurant you might be a company which provides technology to restaurants or, or you know, utensils to restaurants. So you need to talk to them, right? So you have to build a community around that. I think that it, it helps it, uh, you that way. And put your brand out there. Can you yeah, pick up absolutely. on that, Doyle? What do you think? Oh, that's a great yeah. idea. Yeah, no, absolutely. It, it's about educating your your audience, right? I mean, 
is there a direct ROI? Yes, there would be if we sort of funneled people into, you know, a, a program or something like that. But there's different types, right? Is this a sales presentation? No, this is an educational format. So we're looking at it, you know, from a funnel perspective at the top of the funnel type thing, just sort of educating and providing that that trust, which in today's day and age, you know, we're starting with zero trust online. So we have to be able to to build that substantially as well. Otherwise, yeah, we don't have an audience, right? Th this is to build an audience and that's ABC, right? We talked about that first, so. Yeah, I will ask you guys, like, do you guys trust a live video presentation over a pre-recorded? I mean, it's, I think it's a simple answer. Like you will, I know what you will say, but tell me. Which you one mean, you trust? As opposed to watching a live stream like this, as opposed to being recorded? Yeah, pre-recorded on the same topic, which one you will prefer to watch? Well, you can bring the energy to something like this, right? To something live, but you can obviously record it and watch it later. So I think that that's sort of what what's exciting about it is that you can have, you know, we've got three different people across three different or two different continents kind of thing. So how do we actually talk and communicate? And, and so there's an energy associated with that. And to but me, I, that's look, sort of the fundamental thing. I think you're right, Subjit. I, I think um, the the idea that, you know, like these YouTube videos where people talk into the camera and they've got list of this one thing to say. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a bit sick of them. I mean, okay, these people know what they're talking about and they talk at you. They talk yeah. at you. Yeah. But right now, we're talking in real time and we've got guests and, and actually we've got audience members asking questions. You, yeah. you just can't get any better than that. Sure, there's going to be a recording, but we've got Erica in Jamaica talking to yeah. a guy from uh, San Francisco, Perth, originally from Canada, and an Aussie from Melbourne. I mean, you just can't get better than that. I mean, we, we've got the whole world on one screen. Look at yeah, that. Erica. Yeah, Erica, says, uh, Erica is saying that she prefers a uh, live uh, session. I think a live gives you authenticity. There's no edit. Like, we come across as we are. There's like our ums and ums are not chopped off. Um, uh, our personality shows our vulnerabilities are like uh, exposed to the world um we we come across like it puts other people who are listening or watching at ease i think that's what yeah. it, that's why we love radio still I mean, a lot of people said radio will be dead when tv came right but it never died it will never will it never will because it's because one of the best forms of story storytelling right and I, and because wow. i can't watch video while i'm driving my car exactly <laughs> Hey guys, I want to keep moving here. Just going hey, moving, back yeah. to to restream here. Um, actually, I got to share my screen again. Sorry. Um, I just wanted to quickly show you what what one thing was really interesting was that this was the only package that I found so far that has analytics, right? So you can actually oh, okay. see what what your stats are doing, what's happening, how many viewers do you have, and and where are they, and what's going on, and and that sort of thing. Um, audience trends, you can see here, average viewers, max viewers, watched in minutes, new followers, right? So there's that level of detail here that was really quite important with Restream that I didn't actually see uh, in any of the others as well. Can you so, pick up on why that's important, just in case the people haven't well, been well, up then to you know, it? Yeah, well, in that case, you know, live streaming ABC, right? You know your audience is there, you know who they are, what they're doing, how they're doing it, and that sort of thing as well. So it's more a matter of how do you actually connect with that user? Are you creating content that actually is able to um, uh, connect, connect with your audience? Um, you can also schedule the specific event as well, which is a it has a nice console so honestly if they get past the the one sort of viewer and yes you can use i tried to actually set up a, a virtual cam uh with it as well but the virtual cam for mac didn't um didn't allow you to uh it had sort of a, a backdoor way of getting guests in as well so there's not many virtual cams for mac the one that i found cam Again, I, you'd have to use the app, which is another step. And I wanted to make sure that whatever we talk about is is pretty simple. It's easy to manage. Yeah. It's um, quick. It's easy for a business to kind of get started. Once you get into it, then go for it. Yeah, if you want to add sort of that complexity as well to it, um, that can certainly move forward also. So that's Restream. Now let's get into Periscope. We want to go through the criteria as well. So I'm just going to shift my screen. But let, let's talk a little bit about Periscope. Keith, if you want to sort of hit yeah. that up and I'll get yeah, so, ready in the um, background. The reason why I've decided 
the reason why I've decided to focus on Periscope this week is because it's popular with my tribe, coming back to the audience idea. We did a really robust uh, Twitter poll and we asked the question, well, what do you want? Where do you watch videos? Do you watch them on Facebook Live? Do you watch them on Periscope? Do you watch them on uh, LinkedIn Live? Or do you watch them on YouTube? And 52% of people say, well, look, of course, I watch my videos on YouTube, so please make sure whatever you do, you put something there. Yeah. But 24% of my audience that want to do what, I, you know, hear what I have to say, and of course, you have to have your own stats on this, 24% of my personal audience want me, wants me to live stream on Periscope, 24%. So I thought, well, I've got to honour that. I've asked the question. They've given me an answer. Now let's try it out. So Periscope is an app on your phone. And most people would know it as an app on your phone where you just, it's a little bit, it predates TikTok. It's very similar to TikTok. Yeah, it it, it, it's yeah, five years old. There, there, there it is. See? Yeah. So um, we've got, um, is that cut out? There it is. So 52%. 24% and 20% LinkedIn Live. Oh, sorry, Facebook Live. 3.4% on LinkedIn Live. That's the 3.4% of the world that's even heard of it. Most people have said I haven't even heard of it. So um, if my audience wants me to live stream on Periscope, it would make sense to me that I would work that out. Again, it's audience building content. Where is my audience? Give them what they want. So We've been researching ways to send our stream to Periscope. You can't do it with BeLive, even though I quite like BeLive. It only syncs, syncs to uh, Facebook Live and YouTube, which is fine, but it doesn't sync to where my audience is. We Zoom doesn't sync to Periscope. So there's no point in me using Zoom because it doesn't sync to where my audience is. So Periscope started life as an app very similar to what TikTok is now. Fun, funky, here I am at the shops, having an ice cream, you know, I'm at the beach, I'm rollerblading on the beach. And it morphed into something much more than that. And with sites like StreamYard, which we're using today, or Restream, or OBS, or XSplit, which we'll talk about over time, you've now got the facility to use your desktop or laptop and create a show, yeah? yeah? But it doesn't have all of the functionality in the criteria, like um, it's very hard to schedule ahead. It's It's got a lot of the criteria that we found important is not present. You can have guests now on the, on the app, up to th three guests. It's a bit clumsy, but it's possible on the app. But um, the main my main inspiration for using Periscope is that that's where my audience is. And that, in a way, that's got to be the main priority. What, what do you think, guys? What, what do you think about Periscope? What, what's its use case? I, I think Periscope is great because of Twitter, right? And if you your connections or your people who watch you, what do you say, or people you interact with, they are on Twitter, then I think Periscope is great. But yeah, I actually, I, I, I want to cover some other stuff like I don't know. I'm like I'm very curious about hearing your feedback on that. I think mm -hmm. I think people Periscope is good. I mean, to answer your question, but we have to set like bucketize the we our viewers, whoever is listening to this, right? We've got call calling it um, streaming uh, decoder, right? So yeah. there are people there are people who are just beginning. A lot beginning. of people are just beginning to explore it some are intermediate some are some some have been doing it for a while right so i think uh, uh, we should talk about the tips for beginners in, in my view the tips for beginners for me from my side is like just pick any platform pick any camera any mic decent right and then start talking start streaming if you're still even though you're alone you can do that right and you're reading the comments and replying you have to be at ease with the camera, with the technology, with like kill your ooms and ums and that kind of stuff, right? So it, it takes a while. I, seriously, in the beginning, I was camera shy and I didn't want to be on camera at all. Like a, a lot of people who don't want to be on camera. 
and yeah and then some people talk and they hide their face and they have this this emoticon or whatever <laughs> they still do that right so i think um just start doing it i think that's my tip number one and then technology as you said keith don't worry too much about technology and worry about the content and community um technology will catch up pretty soon yeah, I'm, uh, Doyle, I'm going to throw to you in a minute, Doyle, but I want to pick up on what you yeah. just said there. Brian Fanzo says, push the damn button. Yeah, exactly. Just, uh, just try it. Now, yeah, exactly. that sounds that sounds a little bit easy for us because we're into this. Yeah. But And, and the reason, and I, I want to pick up on exactly what you said, the reason this show exists is because I want to be the guy, the crash test dummy, and I'm happy to own that label. I want to be the guy bashing <laughs> into walls saying, hey, guess what? We couldn't get it to work. Don't do this. Don't yeah, do this. Yeah. Don't try this at home. But yeah. what I can say for sure is that StreamYard is amazing. We've done it. You can see it right now. And what that does is it takes a lot of the fear out of people that haven't done it before because one of the big criteria, and I'll throw to you on this, Doyle, one of the big criteria is a test run. If you've never done it before, you don't want to go live and make a fool of yourself. Mm -hmm. So pick up on what subject you said there Doyle and come through the right criteria from the periscope perspective um yeah it, it's sorry I was lost track I just saw a, uh, a comment from Anne Marie um I just wanted to post that as well that's the other thing too is that with live it is sometimes you're trying to juggle what's going on in the back end um is somebody commenting what is somebody else saying do I need to kind of continue the conversation so there you saw a moment where it's like oh Keith, what were you talking about? I was focusing on getting the screen share ready, getting then seeing a comment from Emory. <laughs> you got <laughs> a motor right Emory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it it's it's not an easy job, but it one it's one that you know you have to kind of get the hang of it. And that's the thing too is once you do it, like just keep going, right? It doesn't matter if you if you scrub up or whatever. Like it's it's just keep going. The camera's on. Just keep talking, and away you go. So <laughs> it's, it's such a great comment, isn't it? You'll never get comfortable in front of the camera if you never get in front of the camera. Yeah, that's yeah, what. Exactly. Uh, and Mira yeah. said, "Yeah, she she's so right. I, I think uh, like I some people call it Twitter the water cooler of social media. You know, mm. we get together there, talk, and we disperse." We come there, talk about a topic, and we leave. I think live is like that too. So yeah, it, it, live is not easy. And by the way, I think in the last show I, I uh, made a couple of comments, which are kind of like if you dig deep, why video is important, right? That we have to un understand that, and then why we cannot actually look at the comments, right? Because there's so many comments. Like, okay, it's a nice problem to have have a lot of yeah. viewers. <laughs> right but at the same time it's a problem because people are rrr, 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 typing stuff right yeah. and then you're yeah. like which comment should i pick which should one which one should i answer and all that stuff we, because you want to make it more look like more interactive right and for that reason i think you i mean as a presenter or presenters have to announce up front if this live stream is going to be interactive or we will take the questions at the end or in the middle or what's the format format of it so people who are watching ah, they, are, they are not because i seriously feel like a stupid guy <laughs> dude whatever you call that and, and like when i am typing all this stuff i'm stretching my mind and thinking deep about that topic they're talking and it's falling on deaf ears like it goes in the stream of like all these people saying has hi this everyone. has this happened to you before i've never experienced what you've just said you've actually been in a live stream and you've made comments but they're not acknowledging you is that what you're saying yeah, exactly. It's not even acknowledging. It's like they are. Yeah, it's very relevant content, but it's ignored. I think we need tools using AI or machine learning to pick up the comments which are relevant to that topic because there'll be a lot of junk in there. People will cuss and say you suck or whatever they can if it's really publicly live. They can come up, come down and say whatever they want. Right. So yeah. you have to pick from the good ones from that. And, and that's where data sort of science will come into play. I think as yeah. soon we will see those kind of tools being yeah. uh, added on. Uh, those will be add-ons to, to, the, to, the, to the content. So let, the me, let me just section. pick up what you said there because we're talking to beginners. You're saying this is a nice problem to have. We, yeah. we have a live stream and we know we have Erica from Jamaica and Anne-Marie from Melbourne. We know we have at least two bit viewers, at least two, and they're making comments. Now, when you get busy, 
you're going to have hundreds of comments and the hardest part for Doyle, because he's moderating, is he's he's got to look into the camera and sound like he's listening to me, but he's also got to put one eye, one part of his brain on the comments so that he can add the comment relevant to the conversation and acknowledge the people that are listening, because that's very important. I, I really want to honour what you said there. I've been in situations where I've made comments and I'm going, hello, I'm here. Why won't you acknowledge me? I've made a really relevant point there. I, I want to help. And it's it's really quite a dynamic process. And I actually think now that we've added Periscope, this is even better than Facebook. Do you think the comments are better this way, Doyle, or do you prefer the Facebook version? Um, I like or do they the look Facebook the same? version. Well, this is actually like I've, I've sort of coming to like StreamYard quite a lot more. The comments are quite easy to see. They are off to the side. They're very clear. And thanks, Anne Marie. She's, um, yeah, just to go over this comment, if you make a mistake, uh, laugh and keep going. People appreciate your vulnerability. So true when you're running that. And then this is where women, i.e., multitasking, comes in and very handy. <laughs> you're right. I can't multitask. At least in the morning, I'm a little bit better in the afternoon. So make sure we don't do a live at 6 a.m. Yeah. So that's maybe something to consider is do it when your brain's up operating at the finest as well and thanks erica as well some great uh comments also let's let's keep um going here um we got to get through this criteria otherwise we're going to be here like all day which yeah. i suppose yeah. isn't a bad thing <laughs> um but we're going to talk quickly about periscope and we'll we'll run through these um just really short answers in terms of um how we want to look at them or what yeah. what we yeah. want to do so we're talking periscope right so Category number one out of five presentation. How many guests and how do they connect? So with it's, the app, uh, you can have three guests, but only on the app, and it's a little bit clumsy. Not not suitable for the, the PC or desktop versions. Yeah. Yeah, I, I use the desktop version, so it's a lot easier to work with. Um, they connect with a simple link. So the guests get a certain link. You click it, and away you go. It's got to be super easy. Uh, chroma keys and background blur. You can do chroma keys in StreamYard. I uh, don't have one set up for now. We don't really need it. And as we talked about, it's it's one of those things. It's better to have just a normal background because then you don't have to worry too much about the tech. Uh, screen share, yes, we're sharing the screen right now. So absolutely, you can see what we're doing and how we're doing it. Branding screen graphics and overlays, yes, 100%. Again, they're pretty easy. Sorry, I'm talking StreamYard. We That's right. Be adding in, yeah, we need to be adding in Periscope too. So my apologies. Do you have anything to add there for those five audience experience as well yeah. with Periscope? So let's let's be very clear about what Periscope is and what it isn't. Yes, it's not yes. a desktop. It's not a right. dashboard. It's an app. So it's very simple, and that is the big attraction. It's like TikTok. It's very simple. You simply have an app on your phone and you push record, and that's always been its fundamental use case. But yeah. As time has, has evolved, it has got some more goodies. You I was can... hoping to share to share my screen because I'm on Periscope here in the iPad app, but I couldn't actually connect it. So, yeah, it is a very simple app, and it's it's basic. What do you want to talk about? When you know, let's press live now type thing. So there's yeah. no extra buttons. There's you can do audio only, video location, uh, send out tweets, you know that sort of thing. You can switch your camera front and back type a few messages and away you go. It's yeah, I, simple. I have used Periscope uh, many, many times for many years now uh, because they were the first ones to start uh, live streaming. When I am sitting at Oracle Open World, right, or AWS yes, re yes, re re reInvent, yes. I am in an in interesting session and I can just point the, the camera towards the presenter and then it goes to the world. So because many times those sessions were not live, they didn't used to be live. And they still are not actually only the key uh, keynotes are live for big conferences so if you like a session you just point the camera there and then then you can show it to the world and it's recorded in the history in the digital sort of uh um it's there all the time like so you can go back to it watch it and you can get the recording and chop it and make it tweetable like chunks and re reuse the content and stuff like that it, it, it's a beautiful thing it's it's very That's good beautiful. picking up picking up on this exact use case. You and I both, Doyle, have been to events that have either refused or just haven't been able to go live. Yeah. And I've been at events where I'm thinking this this stuff is great. 
It's yeah. unbelievable. No one's going to see it except the people in the room. Exactly. And then we go away. It's always pissed me off about going to events and not having a, a recording. Yeah, so the great exactly. thing about Periscope is you, you go live and you are there and it's real and you get a link. When it first started, you may remember it was ephemeral like uh, Instagram, but now you, it saves. It's there mm. forever. So it's a very, very, very good app for recording real life. Yeah. And it stays. So I, yeah. I love it. I love it, but mainly from the point of view of having guests and recording in education. So it's got a very v valuable use case, I think. Uh, if, we, if we put things in perspective, like, you know, media was controlled by big giants, like only kings and queens in olden times, like maybe a thousand years back, yeah. only they yeah. could send a message. And even, even like 50 years back, even 20 years back, it's the only media giants could go live and tell their story. And now, Everybody has a smartphone in their pocket. Everybody can tell a story. If you're a good storyteller, do not hesitate to pull out that camera uh, and just, yeah. just go live. Do not hesitate. And there are so many, actually, so much content being generated and so many good artists are being found and so many philosophers in many areas. Um, and they just, they build their own brand. It's crazy. Like TikTok is like, like spreading like wildfire. I'm from Punjab, India, actually born and raised there. And I see a lot of Punjabi content. It's like funny wow. kids videos, wow. all kind of stuff. It, it, it's, it's, it's crazy. Like some stars are being made on that, on these plat platforms. Yeah. yeah. That's where that creativity needs to come in too. And that's probably yeah. one of the, the foundational skills or assets that we need to bring is, is that creativity, right? How do we do that? How do we sort of build upon that? How do we create sort of those opportunities? And live streaming is that that platform that a lot of, you don't necessarily have to be, you know, um, Mozart or Van Gogh to be creative, right? You can sort of yeah. be creative in your own world, uh, in your own business uh, practice or whatever the case may be. But that's and what you you've got and you've mentioned it, you've mentioned it many times, Duel, that we are democratizing content now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, every, that's every, part every, three of our ABC, right? It's content. Everyone gets a chance to have their say. Yeah. Like exactly. I remember, I remember watching a movie about when women got the vote. Just say as an example, this is a very good example. And in 1918, guys would say to their sisters, "Well, I can vote for you. You know, <laughs> I get a vote, and I'll vote for you." Yeah, but what? Yeah. Happens, <laughs> but what happens if your opinion is different to mine? Well. Suck it up. I, I'm the guy. I'm the boss. The and funny thing is, order. the funny thing is, even if your candidate loses, right, you still can go live and tell your story. That's right. <laughs> like, even you're voting. And even in the countries where if you can't even vote in some countries, there's no democracy, you can go live and tell your story. You know, people do that all the time. And they bypass some firewalls and all that stuff, countries firewalls and China is closed and all that stuff. People bypass that and then they get their voice heard. It's, um, it's that simple. One example I always cite is a teacher in third world country made more than a million dollars sharing his lesson plans with teachers in developed nations. They will wow. buy that lesson for like a dollar each or something like that. And he made millions of dollars and more than a million or something like that. That was a uh, news last year. So it's just a uh, lesson plan, like for... lesson plans for teachers, like you're teaching math or some stuff. So yeah. he will just make it formal. And then you can just rather than you creating it, you just buy that for a dollar. And that's it's a power of uh, democratizing, like power of reaching to like 10 million people versus like 10 people in the room. What, what yeah. Keith, you talked about. So it's, it's the scale thing, right? Scale, um, scale. Isn't, yeah, a scale is a, is an ama amazing thing, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I'll stop there. I know I can talk for hours. <laughs> no, no. Well, <laughs> the reason why this is important is that we're slightly outside the loop of this particular content, but why don't you why don't you go through the list anyway? Because it's, yeah. it's important to, to map yeah, 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 you know, yeah, sure. over these criteria. Yeah, so we finished the first five. Um, scheduling in advance, no built-in registration pages. Look, we're looking at it as a business tool. So you know what? Maybe we have to adjust the criteria as well. Ease of use and setup, that's like 100% right there. It's simple. You download the app. Away you go. You use your phone. You use your tablet. Yep. You don't need to worry about your desktop. They do have like a publisher suite. 
I found for Periscope, but that's getting into that com complexity stages as well, where you can use something like OBS as well. Uh, practice runs and record only? No, but that's the whole point of it too. It's like, this is live, this is a way we go kind of thing. So we don't really have to worry about that. And let's get the next one up here. What's been a highlight of uh, live streaming for you, Sarjeet? Oh, live, the, I think it's just being authentic, being like uh, honing your art, if you will, and, and, and of course, coming prepared with the like just outline. I'm going to talk about these five things, but yeah. I don't have anything scripted under those five bullet points. It's all natural. It's whatever comes to my mind at that point as we were given tips in this uh, live stream from from um, people watching us like if you make a mistake keep going just smile away and then keep going because <laughs> if you funny. just start dreading oh my god i made a mistake and you will freeze <laughs> right yeah so it also well, helps you in public speaking i think in, a, ah, in an yes. indirect way so you are in front of the camera you're getting comfortable with like a uh, talking about a topic. The one problem I had in the beginning of my career was that I will have like 10 streams of thoughts in my mind. I cannot channel it in because I have only one mouth, right? <laughs> and I can, I can say one thing at a time. I'll like jumble up all the thoughts and I will make sense to me, but not to people. So it helps you practice that and yes. start small. Uh, you will get fewer audience in the beginning and it will grow and grow and grow. It takes years for people to have a good number of audience and stuff like that. So my advice to all of you who are listening, watching, is just press that red button. Most of the time it's red to record. Yeah, push the red button. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, red button. Press the red button. Exactly, and that's the thing, is that you have to keep going because sometimes things don't work. Like right now, for example, I'm trying to load the, the rest of the pages here um, into Dropbox, rather not Dropbox itself, but my preview screen and it's not actually connecting so that's yeah. where you gotta yeah keep talking you gotta sort yeah. of ask questions. have a backup have a backup plan and yeah. um, but i do like the idea of of being able to have that sort of an outline really and, and you don't have to go in there being totally unprepared right you can yeah. actually have a quick little uh, that's what i do it's i've got my talking points on a little um, erasable mm, yeah, board here. Yeah. And that's kind of what I want to do and what I want to talk about. So so to make sure that I'm covering all my so, bases as so well. So these are my talking points for, for uh, what is it, the camera? OK, here uh, for today's yeah, yeah. talk, I had bunch. So I just wrote that in 10 minutes before we started. And yeah. of course, we covered like less than half of it, but it uh, it gives you uh, it put gives you um, a framework uh, in processing your thoughts. Yeah. The thing that I find fascinating, just picking up Sajid you know, on what you just said there, when you have pre-scripted, pre-formatted videos, sure they're lovely and everything yeah. works and everything looks great, but it's a bit boring. These it's a are bit very, boring here. <laughs> these are very dynamic. Yeah. They, we get to see the real you. You know, we get to hear that you did make a bit of a script, but that, you you know, you haven't got a chance to say everything, which means yeah. there's more to you than this. And, exactly. And the yeah. intro at the beginning, that's, I've written that out because I want to make sure that it comes across, you know, as best as possible as well. So it's important to have some, some of these cues set up. Some people can do it and they just kind of say it and, and away they go and they've got all their ideas in their head and that sort of thing. I'm not one of those people, right? <laughs> I need to make sure that I've at least partially prepared for these types of things um, so I don't stutter and say um and yes, ah and, yes, ah, yes. and all that kind of stuff as well. All right, so moving on here, category three out of five is business and ROI. So cost and freemium model, Periscope is free. You have to have a Twitter account and that's it, right? So there's nothing to be uh, worried about there. Away you go, there's no cost associated. Business aspects from selling and marketing, guess what you're in front of i mean there was a distinction too though that sarjeet and and keith were talking about is that it doesn't matter if you're a 180 million audience or a hundred which is better if you have a more of a sort of focus on the hundred but yeah. that gives you the opportunity to be able to connect with other people as well uh, networking ability open format it's kind of it, it's it's the lives the sense of being live right like i've got Anne marie making uh, comments and questions and um Erica as well, which is fantastic. Thank you so much as well for, for joining in also. Uh, and it looks like, you know, we've connected Erica and Anne-Marie as well. So around the world, 
uh, based on the show, we've been able to do that. So yes. it's it's really a networking ability sort of built into the platform itself. Overall business value, how does the platform allow for good over business case? I don't know, Keith, Sarjeet, do you want to talk about and Periscope specifically, obviously? Yeah, I think Periscope is tied to Twitter only. So that's the drawback, right? So you have this captive audience, but it's a subset of the audience. If you are a restaurant or something or in, in B2C area, I think then Facebook maybe is a better choice for you. Uh, and then you cannot go from Periscope to Facebook because that they, they are in their own world. I think media in general is very segmented. You know, you take the like, you know, you know it, it's segmented. Like we have prime videos here in the US and we have Netflix and all that stuff for, for entertainment. The same thing is happening in this area. So when it comes to information, marketing, uh, knowledge going from brands to masses, yeah. uh, it's segmented. And these huh. platforms like Restream.io and, and the one we are talking about today, uh, other than the Periscope, they actually let you go to the multiple at the same time, right? So I think uh, Periscope kind of suffers from that a little bit. But it has very capped audience if your people are there. If you're in high tech world, I think it's one of the best. Yeah, and well, if you're a starter, if you're a starter, it's one of the best. Let me let me flip what you just said there. What you just said there is absolutely brilliant. Twitter and Periscope are a subset of your audience, and that is a good and a bad thing. It means that you don't reach the Facebook audience. It means that you don't reach the LinkedIn audience. It means you don't link, uh, join the YouTube audience. But the thing that's very interesting about Periscope is that Periscope people love Periscope. And when they go to Periscope, they know what to expect. Like when I'm on Facebook talking to my friends about Saturday night, I don't give a shit about someone who's doing some cup, cupcake party in the western suburbs or right, someone like who... cupcakes? I do, <laughs> but I'm talking to my friends. So, you know, Facebook is almost like the TV model. It's very interruptive. Such and such is live now. Well, that's great. I'm talking to my friends. I don't want to be interrupted halfway through. So the audience on Facebook is large, but their model is slightly interruptive. The, the audience in Pace, uh, Periscope is smaller, but they're engaged. You know, you can only do one thing on Periscope. Periscope is a live streaming app. You don't get cat videos. You can't plan your, your menu. You can't talk to your friends. You know, you, 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 there's nothing else to do. So when you go to Periscope, you know what you're getting and the people that love Periscope love it. And they, they love it and but they're engaged. And so it, it picks up on this idea of do you, do you go for 100 engaged people or 2 billion people who could be doing anything? Yeah, I and think so the, somewhere in between. Yeah, I think another the, on, the, the, on the flip side, I'll play sort of devil's advocate here, is that like you should serve like if you're, I use food analogies a lot. You should yeah. serve the food in the plate people want to eat in or the medium. Right. Like you yeah. should not tell people that like, you have to go to Periscope if you want to watch me. No, no. I think you should be everywhere. You should be Agreed. everywhere you can Absolutely. be because you can afford to be. So if you ha have the multi-streaming, I think you should definitely use it. But in the beginning, it is even for me, it's daunting to think I am on, I'm live on like four platforms and I will look different there, different there, different there. Uh, so it's like I, I will just to pick two at the same two, at one time. Yeah. I think for B two B technologist, I think uh, Twitter and LinkedIn are the best. If you are a if restaurant you can owner, get it. yeah, yeah, <laughs> we can get it working. Yes, I think. <laughs> have um, gotta, I, yeah. Have you got have, it? Uh, have you got it? What? LinkedIn Live. Yeah, LinkedIn Live. I got it a, a while back. So I, hey. I go. You're yeah. the, fifth person, the fifth person in the world that I know. I only know one handful of people. How yeah, did you Henry do Henry is one of them. No, actually, I'm a very act I was very active there. And I also, uh, I don't know, I went to I went to uh, their uh, headquarters here in the Bay Area and ate uh, lunch with some people. And uh, yeah, sometimes those things work. A great <laughs> comment from, yeah, exactly. I was a, a great comment from Erica. I was able to connect with so many people. And that uh, Keith Keller connected me with you guys and several others. Fantastic. So it's global networking at its finest as well. Thanks, Anne Marie. Yeah. Thanks, um, Anne Marie. Really yeah. Good to see. Um, Great to see you guys. Yeah. It's yeah, amazing. Yeah. Thanks for coming. And uh, Anne Marie's got to take off, which is fine. 
Um, or sorry, I'll get it one day. Yeah, I will. <laughs> All right, so let's keep going here. Um, all right, so moving into the technical side, actually, I was going to talk about Instagram too, because that's obviously a, a channel. We, we'll probably have to add this in later on. Yeah. Like maybe not a whole show, but Instagram is like Twitter or Periscope for Twitter. Instagram is, you know, that that live video channel as well that you can run with obviously the uh, still images and that sort of thing too. So it's important to be able to look at where is your audience as well. And that's a part of our live streaming ABC. Can we just pick up on what you've just said there? I I think this is actually worth that we can do it now. We can also do another show. And I'm very interested in Sajit's opinion here. What is the use case for ephemeral content, the content that goes away? I mean, I've never been able to get my head around why people do that. What am I missing? Well, that's like TikTok. I mean, you can save Instagram videos uh, now in the last little while. So there is that save function. But I think from a, a, you know, a human psychology standpoint, it really kind of means that you have to watch it. Otherwise, it's going to disappear. So what am I going to miss? You know, fear of missing out, perhaps? It's the FOMO. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's that. And in a way, it's a good thing. Like the, how our memory works is like we forget most of the stuff and we keep we remember only the key events in our lifetime and the key incidents and stuff like that. I think it has to be that way. And then um yeah we i i I think right now we're going through the phase like i usually try to zoom out in like a number of years like 100 years zoom out and thousand years zoom out kind of thing like i think we are in this phase for the last 10 years or so that that we are creating so much content and so much exhaust like cars spits out exhaust you know, it's waste, right? Yeah, we don't. So, want what do you do with content, exhaust? We want better content. <laughs> we are polluting the world with the content. I believe. Yeah. I think. I think we will fix that problem. Like we have these clean cars. You know, like they don't. Um, they just spit out the water. No, no emission. So we have the high emission rate in the content world right now, guys. So we need to fix that. I think. Yeah, well, well. Mark Schaefer calls that content shock, doesn't he? I mean, there's yeah, so much does. content going on that really, yeah. where do you focus? Where do you start? There's, you could watch content all day and still not catch up. Well, and that's the, the thing, right? We need to be able to create it. And as our message for businesses is that with live streaming, you can create it. So you're moving from a consumer to a creator of content. And yes, you obviously have to, you know, create better content, not just more. But at the same time, like, look at, are you watching stuff or are you doing stuff and creating stuff? I think less, I, I think that's a key point. I will, I will sort of build on that, on top of that a little bit. I think less is more. Even this is when you more. Go, yeah, yeah. When you go live. So say a few things, but meaningful things as, as much as meaningful you can be because in, in live you, you can sort of wander around a little bit. So I, I think it's, it's an art and we we are trying to figure this out i think uh, yeah, quality exactly. quality still matters in live also yeah it does yeah you can't just yeah and, <laughs> verbal and, diarrhea as they say and um, one thing actually the last time we talked to it briefly but we didn't have much time i think we still don't have much time to talk about that video is not searchable guys i yes. cannot search yes. through videos so the content becomes like less usable so we have some tools being built. There are a lot of startups being funded in the Bay Area here in Silicon Valley. The VCs are pouring money into like where you can make the video searchable. Means you have to turn all the video into text, and then you yeah. can search through it. And so then Andy, the tell me why that's important, Sergio. Why is it important that you can search for videos? I know exactly what you mean, but just for the the person in the audience that might not be familiar with this idea, why is it important that people can search your videos? because like we we want to get to the best content like that why we are able to like why we search where we google stuff where we go on on, like we all google has become a word by the way like we google stuff so why do we search because we want to get the best content coming to the top as users so if you cannot search through the content and the video then how do you know which video is better right now our reliance is on the number of views and those can be skewed or manipulated and there's a big industry right now in India. You can buy views. Yeah. These people have computers. They used to have bots. Yeah. They will like create views for you. And um, yeah, you can fool these systems. So I think the, the best content should come to front. And, and that the only way to bring that to front is having access to the content, what was being said 
and the keywords and all that stuff, not just how many people watched it. Yeah, I haven't heard of this one. Do you heard of? Yeah, no, I haven't. Actually, Anne Marie says search searchy.io. You can search video, so that's interesting. I'm wondering if it it creates um, a transcript or a captions file as well. Yeah, um, we'll you, there are tools being built. It. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and sorry, I do need to address this. Sorry, Doyle, you'll get it one day. What she's referring to is that I've actually applied for LinkedIn Live like uh, four times to be exact <laughs> um, and haven't gotten it yet. And I don't think that there's a lot of people in Australia that have it. And I'm not sure what LinkedIn's problem is. So <laughs> they might be doing it regionally or there's a big backlog or something. It's possible yeah. they're doing it regionally. It's Microsoft but, but, now, guys. <laughs> yeah, true. But but what's the point of, of live? Like, isn't it to sort of felic, uh, facilitate conversations amongst LinkedIn yeah. people? Yeah. So ultimately, that's the tool that they're said, you know, can be used to be able to do that. So, um, oh, and Anne Marie says uh, search searchy.io also allows you to search audio too. Wow, that is really yeah. cool. Once you that. can do video, it's audio. Actually, it's the same thing. Yeah. So what she's saying there is, you put in a keyword, and it'll take you to a section of the video or audio that relates wow. to exactly what you're saying there, Sajid. You you want to know uh, all the videos on the, that came out today that mention machine learning. Yeah, last time we yeah. talked and, about it, and, wow. and, and, and catalog them, and then you can go directly to that point. Isn't that exactly. isn't that just genius? That's, pretty cool. That's fascinating. Like you are expert in machine learning, and you want to know, like you are listening to some some somebody or five. You have the five ideal, like your you know, heroes, if you will, in that area, and you are watching their videos. If what if you can just go to that video which talks about that topic, and it's amazing. You will save so much time. And uh, Silicon Angle guys, the Cube guys in in in, in uh, US, uh, they are called ESPN of Tech. Uh, so they uh, have built a tool. But they haven't actually took it to the public yet. It, it works on 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 their content only, which is like a lot of content. They produce wow. thousands of video a month, thousands and thousands. Actually, they interview the the CEO of Microsoft and Adobe and all that stuff, you know, they interview those people and they also interview programmers and practitioners at the same time. So that all that amazing content needs to be tapped in. I think we need yeah, uh, that's, that's better a huge, tools. A huge space to be able to, to develop as well, if you can imagine searching for videos uh, with your text. Um, all right, category four out of five technical, so multiple channel broadcasting and quantity. With Periscope, it's one channel, right? One quantity there that's all you're doing and that's what you're broadcasting for yep. video broadcast quality and options what is the quality i'm not watching it live so i don't know but i think it's like 720 so it's it's pretty i think it's the quality of the phone you're on yeah that could be too so if I you're on it, a, it might look i think it would be uh, uh, my my uh, samsung 7 has qhd Oh, wow. you know, that's the highest you can get on a phone. It's almost like 4K. You're such a yeah. show off, Keith. You're show off. But it's only a seven. I mean, <laughs> it took me a long time to work it out to use it. But the point is that QHD, which is like a superimposition for the word 4K, means that on on my phone, if I have my video set to the highest setting, I could yeah. play that on the telly. That's cool. So right. that's that's a good answer to that question. That you know, yeah. you got you got four K video on your phone. Those things are misleading, by the way. You there's a lot of compression which goes on on the back end yeah, because course. when you store that content, if you're storing it there, like if I have a DSLR here, which is which produces very high quality video, and I push that to Periscope or any other um, sort of live streaming um, platform. They're not storing that at the same. Like they, they're not storing all the yeah. color profiles. They just they just trim it to like a smaller file size, and and you lose quality. A lot of people don't know that about their pictures. Also, when they put that in cloud, uh, be it Google, you know, or or Apple, well, I guess they have to make they it lose work, quality. Huh? Other than that, it wouldn't work. I mean, we've yeah. uh, we, we, we've got uh, yeah, we've got internet here that really dates from about 1988. <laughs> and so we're we lucky to Perth, stream it all. We've got. <laughs> We've got good, we, we have good internet in Perth. We've got 100, 100 megabytes per second. So, oh, wow, <laughs> yeah, I have like that's 1000 Mbps up, 1000 oh, down. So, oh, oh, there. oh, oh, it sounds like <laughs> fighting words there. <laughs> all right, number 16 layout of host panel and customization. It's, I've showed you it before. It's pretty easy. Whoops, I just turned that off. Um, 
the panel's pretty easy to be able to see, so there's nothing complicated about it. Three but six buttons, yeah, six buttons, and go live. The red button, as Sarjeet said, push the red button and go. Uh, yeah. Platform stability, is it stable? I would say yes, 100%. Yes. Yeah. Doesn't stick. I mean, it does depend on your, your connection, it's and in this case, if you're mobile, you're using your data connection for the most part, or you should be. Yeah. Um, not necessarily, but as long as you have the right connection. All right, post-production, create and download recordings in different formats. Are you able to record and download the session? No, I don't. I'm, Not I'm, directly I, from Periscope. 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 Yes. Yeah, you, you can get the videos. Yeah. Can you? How? Okay. Tell me yeah. how. If you, you, uh, I have done that in the past, so by the way, and I I can record a demo and, and send it to you guys. But even if you cannot, any video plays on the screen, you can have the screen capture video and then capture the video with it and, and that 1080, at least 1080, you know, so. Okay, all right, well, good. We'll go, we'll go with that, um, that you can record it and you can download it. Uh, ease of video editing and highlighted speaker view, it is all speaker view, so you don't really have to worry. Um, this is the comparison with, for example, Zoom, where it has like speaker view. So if you're talking, it picks up the, the audio and then that shows your screen as full screen. If you're using something like StreamYard, I can kind of position um, the people around the screen and I can focus in on who's ever, you know, whatever graphic we want to focus on as well. So we're able to do that. So that was that's that um, stat there is how do we actually show more content uh, yeah. through the screen as well? And can we use it for editing? Uh, episode management i don't believe there's episode management in periscope other than you app. can go back yeah other than you can go back in your in your twitter feed and see when you actually did your periscope and that's it there but obviously that can be a little bit complicated all right our two bonus uh questions number 21 bonus overall skill level required sarjeet what do you think for periscope basic that's very uh, basic yeah. very basic good yeah. excellent and on a scale of one to five stars, how do you rate the overall platform and what is your one key takeaway? I think for beginners, it's a five. Can I give five it 10? Out of five? <laughs> no, yeah. five out of five. <laughs> five, okay, five out of five. And for uh, like intermediate, it's like it goes down as you go to professional, it goes even down, yeah. further down. Because it's not for professionals or intermediate. If, if you're a beginner to sort of, uh, like even if you're not not big enough, actually you're just getting at ease with it. I think it's it's best one of the best actually. Um, yeah. Just, yeah, it's not only you are sharing yourself your ideas. You're sharing something happening on the street. Some some performer on the streets of San Francisco who is one of the best. You just go live and somebody sees it, and, and like, or you are sitting in front of Satya Nadella in a big conference. You can go live there. So it, it's uh, an amazing thing. What uh, with the technology democratization we are talking about. The, te the stuff which was available to the kings and queens, now it's in everybody's hands. We talked about it earlier. It's I nice. think that we have that with Periscope. It is so simple. With other tools, it's a little cumbersome. But this here, just go on the app and press that red button and you're live. <laughs> Plus, press I, I, I absolutely press agree. the red button. That's, a, I, that's I, the tagline. I would actually, I would give it four out of five, and I'll tell you really? why. Four? Oh, no. I'll, I'll tell you why. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm a Twitter guy. I'm a Twitter okay. guy, and I love it. Uh -huh. But it is primarily an app-based an app based thing. Yeah. And it's it does have the idea of adding guests on the app, and that's quite a cool new feature. And one of the reasons I love it is because at the end of the session, you get a link which lives forever. Yeah. So it's 10 times better, in my opinion, than Instagram Live because the link lives forever. We've gone to all this trouble to get all this content together. I don't want it to go away in 12 in 12 or 24 hours. Or have to find uh, it. <laughs> I have to find it. And so I get a link, and that link will live forever, and I can then tweet it out again. Um, I've found it quite hard to get a recording. I found that a w major weakness in this system. I've never been able to work out how to do it, so I'm very interested to see how to do that. But you can, certainly can't get the download on your phone. Uh, it does suck up a lot of data. This is actually an important point to know. If you're out in the street doing a live stream, it sucks up a lot of data in an environment where data costs money, if it does for you, doesn't so much anymore. But when I was getting three gig for 30 bucks, you know, a, a live stream would effectively cost me 10 bucks. 
So it costs a lot of money. And so I, I think it's a fundamentally wonderful thing, but with without StreamYard or Restream, I, I probably would never use it. Yeah. Yeah. Without I, I, without I, yeah. With, Without that uh, additional f functionality of adding it to StreamYard or Restream or whatever comes next, I, I personally have never used re uh, Periscope as a "here's me at" because I'm not a "here's me at" type of person. I personally do not resonate with TikTok, and I can tell you for sure I'm never going to use that. <laughs> oh, come I'm on, not dead. You'd be good I'm, on, I'm, on TikTok. I am thinking we're starting a tech comedy show on TikTok. <laughs> oh, okay. A, a, TikTok, a TikTok tech TikTok show. Comedy a tech comedy. Show. Comedy. We could call it, we could call it tech 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 TikTok. <laughs> or tick, 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 TikTok tech. tech. TikTok tech. tech. Yeah. yeah, TikTok so, tech. TikTok you got tech. that. <laughs> so it's a, it, it's a fun oh, app. Sorry. You go. Okay. What do you think? Yeah. yeah, no, I'm going to give it three stars out of five. Um, why is that? Well, from the business perspective, I think it's it's an okay tool. And, and what you just said, Keith, is very important, is that unless you're that person that, you know, goes and does the live, you know, immediately now kind of thing, short and sweet type thing, that's fine. If that's your audience and that's you as, as your personal brand or part of your business, then hey, absolutely. But from an overall business perspective, yes, I can broadcast to it, but I'm like you, I wouldn't necessarily go and start a Periscope uh, live video because I can't see how I can connect the business side of it as well. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's about me. It is about me and my personal brand. So that's, that's a good thing, right? But there's that disconnect there, I believe, uh, from yeah. the business side as well. Mm. All right. Um, so let's wrap up here. We wanted to also talk about security. Um, we don't have a lot of time, but but quickly, you know, Sarjeet and Keith, what are, what are your thoughts about security? And there's obviously been a lot of things in the press about Zoom and Zoom not working or being insecure. Like, how do we deal with that? And should we all be jumping off of Zoom? I I will share my personal experience from today. Earlier today, we were like six of us talking about IBM thing. It's going on right now, happening. And then we was like, well, let's do the analysis of the of the keynote from yesterday. And Neil and Keith and a couple of guys from uh, IBM are there. Like we made some one of us made a mistake of putting that link on on uh, Twitter, and we got very bad stuff being shown in our meeting. Oh, you got uh, Zoom bumped? Zoom bumped, yes. It was so disturbing. We had to shut down the meeting, and then it was like we did, like, the person who was running the meeting didn't know what to do. So it's like, OK, stop it. Like I, I had to do this. It was so bad. So um, it, it was like eye-opening experience. Like what happened? Zoom has improved, by the way. So now you you have to accept a newcomer into the meeting. Earlier it was just yeah. come on in, like everybody you click on a link, you're in, just, just right? Now you have down. to accept. But when you're run, running the the meeting and you cannot sometimes pay attention, same thing with our comments. Like we're reading the comment and we're doing all this stuff, and then you just he he accepted it and it was bad. I think Zoom has a lot to improve. Uh, they still need to use like maybe delay they need to enable like delay in joining or those, uh, i wish there was a feature that um, newer people join only voice only till i tell them that they can uh, turn on their camera i have the control yeah. so mm -hmm. by default That's like really the first idea. the first 30 yeah. seconds is always like that i can know who it is and then i said okay i i know it's really keith some people pretend to be keith for example they can pretend to be you and they're not you so because you know they know who was invited to the meeting. But I think security is a huge issue. And there can be IP leak. By the way, around security, but, there's but another how topic. Many people, yeah, I suppose. I mean, but how many people are, I mean, for general business stuff, I would say that it's, it's more than good enough, right? We're not talking high top secret kind of stuff. And if you're talking top secret stuff, then yeah, you're probably right. Um, maybe you need to use something else, but for the general business user, would you say it's okay or not? Uh, you mean uh, Periscope in this case, or Zoom, or no, what are no, we talking no, sorry, about? Sorry, I'm talking Zoom. Yeah, back to Zoom. Zoom. Yeah, Zoom I think Zoom. Security. Yeah, I think Zoom is okay if any information you are dispersing is public facing. I think it's pretty good. Yeah. 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 But if it's B two B, it it need it it still lacks a lot of stuff in my view. Yeah. Um, I, look, yeah, I'd okay. be interested to know how Microsoft Teams 
and Google Meet and WebEx, which are all very similar, compare to each other? How do they compare and which one's better? From the, the traditional players, which are highly start out to be like highly secured and all that. Yeah. yeah I, th I think WebEx was, I mean, I, I loved WebEx for a long time. Uh, and Microsoft solution is like relatively new. It's cumbersome to use. I tried it. I mean, I, I easy, I, even as a techie, I kind of hated it, like figuring it out. Wow. Kind of thing. Microsoft Teams. Yeah. It was like a little hard to get to it kind of thing. Right. And Google yeah. Meet? Google Meet is simple. I think they have they know usability. Yeah, Google is good at that. It's pretty easy. But I, I guess the point too is that this show is live streaming decoded. So we're assuming that what you're talking about is open for public consumption too. So yeah. it really kind of goes without saying that yes, there are other channels out there that allow you to have that extra level of security. But you know, it's, it's something the, you're that not you, if, if you're live streaming, then guess what? You want people to see it. You don't want yeah. people to come in and show you porn or whatever the case may be, right? Yeah. Well, you know but the thing I love, sort of... I really want to point this out. This is a very key takeaway from this session. Last week we did Zoom and Zoom allows 100 guests in the room mm. and anyone can join if they've got the link. Whereas StreamYard only allows a maximum of six people in the in the uh, format, and yeah. we have complete control over who they are. Complete control. There's, I can kick there's, you out at any time, Keith. That's right. You've got complete control. <laughs> and what? Why that's I'm important? I'm about to do it. Okay. Right. No worries. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll shut up now. But the point is that if you've only got six people, you've got a very limited group. Yeah. You know, you can have six really high performing people joining the conversation and really adding value as opposed to 50 or 60 people sort of waiting on the fringes to burst in. And what are they adding? What are they adding to the conversation? Yeah. I think you know, you can't go overboard. Like you can't do not go overboard. I mean, that's the that's the number one tip I will give. Like don't write. Even if you can write 30 people, don't do it. You know, somebody will mess up. Somebody can steal the link, even if you have control. Like you can kick out people in, in Zoom and stuff like that. Yeah. It, it, there's no way you can manage 60 people at a time. You can manage four or five. That's right. And everyone people. else can. And everyone else, like today, they can make a comment and they yes, can be exactly. part of the conversation. But they don't. They don't have to be um, invasive. Not that anyone yeah. on the call today would have been, yeah. but this yeah, guy yeah. that showed the the, the the stuff that he showed, I mean, he was obviously just he or she was just obviously a, a, you know an irritant, you know, an, yeah. an adjutant, you know, someone yeah. just wanted to Bad be actors. disruptive for the for, for the yeah. fake for, for the fun of it. But and they're not the people you want. So uh, th this is an incredibly valuable uh, uh, sort of format for us. Yeah, what, another what another aspect. Just want to mention that like. When you're working for a company, most of us are working for somebody. Like as a, maybe it's a business or like we're working always work for ourselves, but we work with a company, you know, like under a, a brand or something like that. So I think I think we need to keep in mind the policies and procedures of that particular yes, business, um, even even when you're home because it's still associated with that brand. Sometimes like you sign a contract here in the US, it's like, you, you can do this, you can't do that. So be cognizant of the fact that you represent a brand also. So uh, adhere to those policies. I think the I think the brands do not have those policies yet. Brands didn't have policies. Like, can I go on Twitter and say this, right? So uh, it's like a self-regulation, self-regulation by people. And that's many times some of the best experts who can add a lot more value to the brand they don't go live or they don't go on twitter because they are afraid that if i say this my brand will not like it or i don't want to, i cannot throw my brand under the bus blah 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 so i think brands need to do some work also uh, besides individuals mm -hmm. on the security and 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 regulation point of view all right we'll wrap up the comments and then close off i guess um just to kind of go through a few old ones um uh, we talked about searchy.io thank you so much Anne marie really appreciate that tip i'm going to take a look at that 
and see. How many knows a lot about this? Like, I need to pick up. Yeah, her yeah, brain. yeah. Well, she's on next week as well. She yeah. joined us on episode number two. She's one of the five two. people in the world that's got LinkedIn Live. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, here's one. Nice Thanks, today. Erica. Doyle, you have such a great voice for live streaming. Great team, guys. Nice blend. Yes, I agree. Great team, yeah. guys. Thank you. Radio Thank voice. Paul. You have Doyle. Radio voice. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, Emery, quality is great. Uh, that's on Periscope. She's watching on Periscope, which is good. Um, let's see what else here we got. Keith, you can have AI on here as a guest too. Talking about LinkedIn live streaming. Yes, any thoughts on WebEx versus Zoom? We are going to go through WebEx coming up in one of the other episodes coming up as well, as well as MS Teams also. So we're gonna. it's on our tick box that we need to be able to take a look at. All right, so with that, Thank you so much, gentlemen. Really appreciate your time. It's been a fantastic conversation. Uh, some wonderful insights. Sarjeet all the way from the other side of the world and Keith all the way from Melbourne uh, and myself here from here in a little bit cloudy Perth. But uh, thanks everybody for watching. If you do have any comments or questions, please contact, contact us directly. Actually, I've got, I want to put these up here, make sure I use them. I've, you can contact Keith Keller at Keith Keller, myself, Doyle Bueller. And uh, where's Sarjeet? Sarjeet. Go. It's my yeah. name. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. All right. So reach out, please. If you're in replay and asking a question, just hashtag replay and we'll get on to it as quickly as possible. So once again, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Stay awesome. Stay safe. And we will see you online.